Sports Note for Saturday, April the 20th. Uh, I'm actually getting ready for the Wise Guys here in just a couple of hours as, as I'm taping this. Uh, but this was definitely something I wanted to get out here as early as uh, Thursday morning when it, when it really became official when I woke up. And our long-standing nightmare in the NHL is over. No, the Boston Bruins are not being folded. No, Brad Marchand is not getting kicked out of the league. Uh, it's the failed experiment that's lasted for 25 years of hockey in the desert is temporarily over. Gary Bettman's child, namely the Arizona Coyotes, are officially no more. Now, I'm not going to sit here and, and revel and rag on um, the, the situation because I feel for the fans in Arizona. I really do. Uh, because I firsthand experienced exactly what all of you are, are going through right now. When the Cleveland Browns were ripped away from us in 1995, we didn't have a uh, we didn't have a team for three years. Now the the details uh, regarding our many more are coming out. It was a very very fast moving story uh, story, especially over the course of the last week here. Uh, but it's been something that's also been building for a, a number of months if not the last few years, uh, really kind of taken on a life of its own. Now, we all know that the Coyotes were essentially founded when they moved from Winnipeg uh, back in 1996. And the irony is that the Atlanta franchise, the Thrashers, came into the league around 1999 and then moved to Winnipeg after only 11 years. With the Coyotes now moving to Salt Lake City under the ownership of, of Ryan Smith, uh, the owner of the NBA's Jazz. The city of Utah is not going to retain the rights. That's actually going to be the the property right now of former Coyotes owner Alex Marullo. Now, Marullo uh, was a minority owner of the franchise uh, with him, and I believe his name was John Barrowman. Um, I could actually also be mistaking that with the gentleman who played um, on the TV show Arrow, um, but I believe I am. Um, but Marullo purchased controlling interest and the and the majority stake of the Coyotes back in 2019 for $300 million, and in turn now has sold the team to Smith for the cost of $1.2 billion. Now, that's a hell of a turnaround here in just the course of, of a few years, considering the Coyotes have only made the playoffs one time in really the last decade, and that was actually uh, a first-round loss to the Colorado Avalanche in the 2020 COVID bubble after they had actually won an opening round series. Because remember, that's actually where the NHL sent 12 teams per conference to uh, the postseason, and then also did a round robin of the top four teams for seeding purposes. It was a very exciting playoffs, uh, but then again, at that point, we were just hoping for anything. It was also the last time that some of these teams had actually made the playoffs, like in Arizona, um, like a, like a Detroit, for that matter. Um, it and yet Buffalo still couldn't actually make the playoffs, although they were. I, they had a legitimate gripe because they still would have had games in hand when that season uh, was when the regular season was cut short. But that's neither here nor there. But the Coyotes have only made one conference final uh, in in franchise history in in 25 years in the deserts. Uh, went through a multitude of of ownership changes. But the but the the more prominent thing is not so much the look of the team. We're going from the uh, the black and sand, um, you know, the Kachina look when they first came in, and then shifting to the uh, to the crimson and sand uh, of the of the howling coyote, uh, and then slowly but surely the Kachina comes back, uh, a very very popular jersey. Certainly updating it with, uh, you know, with with Reebok and Adidas uh, having you know the uh, the uniform contract with the NA, uh, with the NHL and now uh, now going to be getting a new look yet again um, but 
the Coyotes were essentially locked out of Gila River Arena where the Phoenix Suns played. Now, it's it used to be known as Gila River Arena, but it was known that as the, at the time uh, for the 2021-22 season, basically kind of leaving them with, you know, as, as orphans. And they were looking to uh, possibly build a new arena in Tempe, could not actually come to an agreement uh, with that. Uh, it was it was primarily blocked by Arizona State University, and yet the funny thing is, is they ended up playing in the Arizona State University um, arena, which only holds 5,500, the, the now infamous Mullet Arena. Remember when they first moved in, there were no hockey locker rooms at that point. They actually had to, for the 2022-23 season, they had to send the Coyotes out on the road for the first two weeks of the regular season so they could build some temporary... NHL quality locker rooms for the both the home and away squads. Um, it was again a 5,500 seat arena. It was far and away the smallest arena in the league. It was even it was a fraction of what Winnipeg was when they moved from Atlanta to the MTS Center and were only uh, at that time it was known as the MTS Center. Now the Canadian Life Center, uh, which was only about. On fourteen thousand, it change. I want to say now that they've upgraded that to fifteen thousand, uh, like fifteen one or fifteen three, something like that. Still the smallest arena in the NHL, uh, at least for now, um, because with the Coyotes move, they are now going to be playing in the Delta Center where the Jazz play. Now that's the good news. Um, the bad news is is that they're still going to be in the smallest arena in the league because right now, until they can actually make the necessary renovations to get the arena NHL ready until the Smiths can actually build a uh, a proper arena in downtown Salt Lake City um, as the the Delta Center was built in 1991 uh, they're only going to be holding about 14,000 in there for hockey but there is going to be the expansion uh, possibility because they hold 18 and change for basketball uh, naturally you're gonna you're gonna lose some of those seats naturally what would be down on the floor there uh, but there's there's they're hopeful that they can get the arena up to around you know 15 and a half 16 maybe 16 and a half in the next couple of years and then uh, along the way not only are they going to be doing these types of renovations but it's not going to be a whole it's not going to be like a one two hundred million dollar interior renovation uh, at that particular point we do know that Smith uh, indicated in in his introductory press conference when the league unanimous, unanimously approved the sale uh, on Wednesday uh, on early Thursday I should say uh, that the team will be known as Utah they will not be known as Salt Lake City I want to say there's something in the state bylaw uh, bylaws that aren't going to let them be called Salt Lake City they're going to be known as Utah any other um, hockey incarnate that there was minor league or otherwise was always known as Utah more specifically uh, the Utah Grizzlies of the uh, of the ECHL the IHL I believe they were in the AHL for a little while but they were always known as Utah uh, there were uh, there were arena football teams that were known as Utah uh, it's not known as Salt Lake City it's one of those things where no matter where in the state that they play uh, you know they were going to be known as Utah because they were going to be the only pro sport team of uh, in that league in the state. Um, you're not going to put you weren't going to be able to put a team in Provo, uh, it, which is a college town. Salt Lake City is is the fourth fastest growing market in the United States, so it definitely makes sense to be able to get the Coyotes out of the failed experiment that is the desert and get them into a market that is flourishing. Now it's about 660 some odd miles away I want to say it's 666 uh, you know which actually would mean wouldn't it be more apropos if the Devils were playing there that's neither here nor there there are probably more uh, there's probably a decent amount of coyotes that are going to be in um, you know in Salt Lake City uh, but it's uh, but Marulo retains the coyote name the coyote colors uh, the coyote records which Here's the funny thing about that is that he's going to retain the Coyote franchise records, which actually stem back to the original Jets, but the Winnip but the original Winnipeg Jets not only include some of their history from the the lineage of the Atlanta franchise, but they've also started incorporating 
uh, some of their history for the original incarnation of the uh, of the Winnipeg Jets, even when they were back in the WHA um, before they had folded into the NHL. Um, so we know that the team is going to be known as Utah. We just don't know what. There's a possibility that they may just kind of take a placeholder and be known as like the Utah Hockey Club or something for a year, kind of like what the Washington NFL franchise being known as the Washington football team uh, for a year, uh, transitioning away from the Redskins before they actually were, uh, you know, brought back as the as the Commanders. And there was even a groundswell for people to go back to Redskins, but that's never going to happen now that Dan Snyder has sold the team. Um, but there's there's people saying it could we could be thinking Utah Swarm. Could we be looking again at, at an NHL version of the Utah Grizzlies? Uh, could, you know, there's a number of different ideas out there. Uh, but the but the fact remains is that we've we've still got a 32 team league, uh, and now there's even more of a call for the NHL with with this uh, to be able to split into four divisions of eight. But there's a caveat to that. Part of the sale with Marullo uh, handing the team off now, essentially to uh, to Ryan Smith, uh, is that. He can bring the Coyotes back with the, if they can get an arena built in the in the Phoenix, Scottsdale, Tempe, you know, greater metropolitan area within the course of the next five years. Now, this is what they actually refer to as the Cleveland Browns deal. When the Browns left for Baltimore, uh, Art Modell, the toxic son of a bitch that he is, um, you know, who's looking up at us right now, um, was not allowed to take the the name, the records, the colors, the likenesses, and the Ravens were essentially the Baltimore Ravens were brought in as uh, as an expansion franchise. And when the Browns came back in 1999, uh, they retained all rights, records, colors, history, everything like that. Um, so even though they've only made three playoffs in the in the near th- you know in the 25 years they've been back, um, they still have eight NFL championships to their credit, uh, even though they have no desired path, or I, sh- I don't want to say desired, but they have no functional path uh, to be able to make that a ninth anytime soon uh, with their quarterback situation. But again, neither here nor there. Um, the Coyotes have a lot of good young talent, uh, namely Logan Cooley, uh, who's a 19-year-old prospect. Um, but there's there's a lot of uncertainty right now with how young they are and and how well they've developed. I want to say they finished 11th in the Western Conference uh, when the regular season ended. It was a very emotional send off when they when they beat Edmonton five to two on Wednesday night in the final game in not only Mullet Arena but also in Phoenix for the uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of upside with. Uh, with the now Utah franchise, but it also makes you wonder: Are they going to be able? If if everything was getting, uh, you know, blocked with the fact that Marulo tried to get the team to to build an arena in Scottsdale, it was rejected. They tried to go to Tempe, uh, it was rejected. Uh, they got evicted out of Glendale. So. Even though you have the the youth hockey programs and Arizona State actually now fields a Division One hockey program, um, even the fan base is there, but is is it there enough to where they would bring the team back as a thirty third team? And at that particular point, could you possibly see the NHL add? three more teams and expand to 36 and maybe go to three divisions of uh go to three divisions of six per conference uh maybe expand the playoffs to where you get to play in every year uh at that particular point which would be a hell of an idea uh there's a lot there's there's a lot of groundswell for Atlanta uh it actually fixes your Canada problem because you would have to add Quebec uh Kansas City could be in the mix Houston could be in the mix Salt Lake City was one of those markets that the NHL had been targeting uh, in recent years, uh, especially with the uncertainty involving the the Coyote franchise. 
not knowing exactly where they were going to be because their lease at Muller Arena was only good through the end of next season. Well, that's now completely out the window. And there's also talk now that now that Smith owns the, the franchise, could he actually take their minor league team in Tucson, either keep them in Tucson or could he actually move them into uh, Muller Arena, kind of keeping the agreement there in Tempe. Um, of Marulo's $1.2 uh, billion sale price, uh, one billion of that. Uh, I'm, uh, he keeps one. He keeps one billion of that of Smith's uh, 1.2 billion sell uh, sale, and then the other 200 million gets distributed amongst the other 31 teams in the league. Uh, the the Coyotes now are going to be effectively an inactive franchise. Uh, but if they do not get something done or an agreement, uh, and at least ground being broken uh, on a new arena by the trying to do the math here I want to see the 2029-2030 NHL season then the NHL will effectively uh, as as control of the the fran uh, at that point Marullo would lose essentially control of the franchise he would have to give the one mil oh, the one billion dollar sale price back to the NHL um and then um it would, I, I would imagine it would be prorated at that point, but then the Coyote franchise is effectively folded, which we have really not seen since we're talking maybe um, the Oakland Seals, but then again, you you figured the Cleveland Barons were a, an expansion franchise, kind of merged with the Oakland franchise. That franchise effectively uh, merged in with uh, with the Minnesota North Stars, and it's now the lineage of the Dallas Stars. So you've got to go into the way back machine to find the last time a major Big Four franchise actually folded. We've seen it uh, in in MLS. We've seen it in minor league, uh, you know, uh, baseball and uh, hockey, basketball. We've seen it all there. But again, that's minor league in the MLS is never going to be a top four sport in this country, no matter how many teams they put into that league, because hockey uh, hockey will always kind of reign a little bit more supreme um, for, you know, for the seasonal aspect. Um, and, you know, you can actually fit a, uh, you can pack 12, 13,000, even, even for a bad team, uh, into an NHL arena. You're never going to pack, you know, 30, 40,000 fans into a soccer stadium every single game of of their schedule um because again it's 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 a game that's you know migrated from from overseas and you can't really keep track of you know the majority of the players involved there um but let me know what you guys think on uh, what do you think what do you possibly think the name of the franchise is going to be do you think that Arizona got off easy here with this uh do you think this should have actually happened sooner who do you think is going to be um who do you? Uh, what do you think is going to? Uh, what do you think is going to happen? Is the NHL going to expand? Uh, is is this something where? Uh, do they go to thirty four? Do they go to thirty six? Um, do you uh, do you think that uh, that they're going to stay and, and renovate the Delta Center, or do you actually think it's going to be something where uh, they're going to have to build a brand new arena, even though the uh, even though the Seattle State. Uh, I'm sorry, the, not the Seattle. Where am I thinking Seattle? Because they were the most recent team to come in. Uh, the uh, the Utah uh, Senate approved a 1.8 billion dollar uh, renovation to the to the downtown Salt Lake City metropolitan area, essentially. So Mike and I will be with you guys on the Wise Guys. Uh, to go check that out. It's NFL Draft Preview Night. We will be live with you guys on Thursday night for round one of the NFL Draft. And I will be back with you guys next week. Take care.